the Ganesh Kritik is coming to you from the National Stadium where President Irfan Ali gives more support to culture, youth and sport in Guyana. With each other in the various communities. And this is something that the President had a keen eye on in terms of empowering local communities and seeing that they are, the equipment is used uh, to enhance their communities and their lifestyle and their welfare. Also, we know that um, a lot of times, now that Guyanese are becoming more prosperous, we're living longer, we have better health care. Um, we want that while they're living longer, they have good opportunities and access to exercising and being able to live a, a better quality of life. So I uh, won't say any more. I'll introduce the president now so that he can give his own remarks because he knows he's been really stressing the importance of communities and communities at all levels, in all regions, and in the handing over of this equipment that we will be doing over the next uh, few weeks and couple of months, um, it's really to emphasize how important communities are uh, to the president, to the cabinet, and the public. Advance 
uh, our efforts in promoting sports and also culture. So uh, this is, as I said, this is key investment. And we want the ownership part of it. The, the community must play a part. And that is why we are given the ownership of a lot of these uh, facilities so that they can take on the role of maintaining, they can take on the role of ensuring that they keep these uh, pieces of equipment in good upkeep so that they can serve their long term interests. They'll be provided the necessary training also. Another program that we want to launch is a uh, program that will focus on physical education at a community level and at school levels. At the school levels, we will have concentration of schools serviced by a uh, professional coach. I've already asked uh, Charles to look at the ex-athletes. We have some very good cricketers who would have retired, uh, footballers who would have retired, and let us bring them into a mentorship and coaching program. So we can train them in mentorship and coaching to go out there on behalf of the ministry. And this has to be a combined effort with the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Youth Sports and Culture. So that they will be part of transforming the mind, the, the mindset, transforming the sporting environment, and also our interest in sports across the country. It's very important that we keep a very high interest in sports. So no country is going to be well. We focus on everything else, but if we don't make the investment on sports development, then we will lose the interest in different sporting activities along the way. And we don't want that to happen. We have some key areas, cricket, volleyball, football, but we also have new and emerging areas that we can build a lot of talent around. So, I want to congratulate again, uh, Charles, thank the Legion for being out here in this very simple ceremony, and to say to you that we look forward to working with every community. Our aim is to get in every single community, and that is what, uh, that is what we're about. Thank you very much. Those of you who have just tuned into the Guyanese Critic Live, um, we're coming to you from the National Stadium where the President is doing a simple hand of a ceremony of We the Machines. Uh, you can see on the ground here, and lawn mowers, um, motorized lawn mowers that are to facilitate in the upkeeping and maintenance of um, sporting facilities and grounds and as the president called them, wellness facilities across the country. Uh, the president is doing a side line, basically a, a small sideline interview, so let's go and hear what he has to say. So, <clears throat> our wildly manifesto is a guide on what we want to achieve and the vision that we have. We are working surpassing that. And once the opportunity presents itself for us to surpass that, we will surpass that. And I can tell you, uh, based on what we've achieved so far, uh, we are well ahead of things, but we are not we are not marking ourselves by being well ahead. We work every day as if we are behind. Because we want to do better every day for the people. And that is ultimately what that is my only interest and that was that is what drives me every day. What else can we do? How else can we improve things? And that is why I'm so pleased with what is happening here in this ministry also, because our, our uh, approach to development and our commitment was to ensure the communities are involved. And that is why the cabinet outreaches, the ministers are out there so much, because they have one direction, and that is people must be part of this People must feel as if they are a part of what is taking place. So in everything we do, you will see people being the centerpiece. 
um, and we, we're still talking about the uh, the the three new um, multi-purpose center we still have to start and that is two major projects across the country but we're also looking right here in the city too as to how we create uh, better improved green spaces that are conducive for families and, and this whole wellness approach of doing things um, in all our infrastructure that we're doing now we're taking that in as uh, part of the comprehensive development so that you can have walkways and so on because a lot of people these days uh, come out with job and so on so you have to prepare the infrastructure to facilitate that and you know once we build it into the culture of the society and people start using exercise and sport as a part of their culture and part of who they are then we'll, we'll invest less in primary health care because less people will have diabetes less people will have uh, issues of high blood pressure and that is what you want create a healthier society um, What I would say you will see continuously more investment in sports. And <clears throat> the budget is just one aspect, but you, you can have a large budget, budget, but if you don't have the energy in the sector to take the sector forward. And what we're seeing from all the sectors, including sports, is the level of energy that is pushing the sector. Uh, all the sector requires a commitment to the vision and a, and a, a collective approach, a, a team approach. And that is what <clears throat> I, I try to tell uh, the cabinet every single day. Uh, we have to build teams. We have to build teams of all across this country. There must not be uh, a team that does not make you feel as if you're in that. Every team, when you look at the team that is pushing program policies and programs forward, you must say, yes, this is Kayana moving forward. You know, I just, uh, yesterday, I, I well, not, yeah, uh, last evening, I, I went uh, on some of the housing programs, the assessment, and I was so pleased. So many different teams, so many young people. You have, uh, on one side alone, you have 2,000 young Guyanese of every walk of life there. Uh, and that is the type of plan we're building, right? So um, it, is, it is all about building teams and involving teams. For example, a couple of days ago, you had a post on social media stating yeah. their dissatisfaction with one uh, guy's cricket not being a part of the work of the sport. Is that a hint that, as an avid cricket fan, you're quite disappointed with the lack of transparency and the consistency of the West Indies selectors? It is crazy, yeah. It is crazy that he's not here. As a matter of fact, I, 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 I will go beyond that to say it's not only a issue of transparency. Who owns West Indies cricket? If the people of the West Indies own West Indies cricket, then somebody has to be accountable to the people. Right? And, and now, this, is a, this is a young man who, uh, I think he ended the tournament second in the wicket-taking list, right? right? He, he's obviously, uh, I don't want to make comments on those who are in the team, mm. but obviously his batting skills is enormous. Mm. And, you know, if I, I put myself in his place, if I know that I'm going in this tournament, secure a place in the West Indies team and I'm putting everything out there to show my talent and to show that I'm informed and then at the end of the tournament that doesn't matter I'm not picked based on my form or my performance then what happens you know but this is a matter for the cricket board and the and the authorities also to, to weigh in and weigh in you know this is not a Guyana matter I think this has to be a regional matter in which the region itself starts paying attention to how people are treated, right? Have and you got any feedback though from the, the JCB? There are two sitting directors and the trainer selectors as well. So then, have they given you any feedback as a courtesy of what goes on at the CDR level? I have not heard from anybody from the Guyana Cricket Board. I have not heard from anyone. Um, I feel as a, as a Guyanese and as someone, not only as a Guyanese, as a West Indian fan, a great West Indian fan, I've, I've been following cricket all my life that, and I've seen situations when people who are in a position to speak up uh, did not speak and I see great talent himself by. Great talent, we lost great talent. This is a superb talent. 
this is a superb talent. This is this is an all-rounder that I think has a great, great future ahead of him. My, and I, I, I'm happy I had the opportunity. I spoke to him directly, to, and I told him hold his head, hold his head up high, and continue to work hard. Continue to work hard, perform, and and, and let your performance speak for itself. But we have to when when injustices uh, when there is injustice, we have to speak out. And this is a case of injustice. It is a case of injustice. And um, and I hope that uh, there will be an official release on and on his exclusion. I think also for transparency, the West Indies Board needs to publish immediately the criteria for selection for all levels of cricket. Because if you have the regional tournament as the tournament that select the West Indies team. And you have bowlers coming out of the regional tournament with the most wicket and can't find a place in the team. What happens? Then there is no incentive to being the best bowler in the tournament. You have batsmen coming out with high average and they're not part of the team. It is time the people of, uh, uh, of the region know exactly what criteria the board is using to select. Thank you. Yeah. How are you? I'm okay. So, guys, you would have heard uh, from the president and in direct relation to sport, issues of sport. And we are coming to you live from the National Stadium. Um, the President and by extension the Minister of Culture, Youth and Sport have expressed, uh, constantly expressed their interest in developing the grounds and developing sport itself. And just behind, I see something is being done with the cricket pitch. Um, and for those of you, Ronald, you could give them a roundabout just for them to see what the National Stadium looks like. And these are John Deere uh, mechanical mowers and they got weeding machines. And this was a just a simple uh, handover ceremony. Um, I'm hoping this has been very informational to you. And for you to understand, um, one of the important things of what the Guyanese critic does is showing you what happens in lifetime uh, with the intention of having a level of transparency. Uh, very, very important. Um, the government must show what they do for the people when they do it for the people. And in some cases, or in most cases, you should have what the cost is, since this is your money um, being managed by your government. So let's go and hear what the Minister of Culture, Youth and Sport has to say, if he has any personal input. <laughs> Training is to using the equipment. 
you don't want people to use the equipment incorrectly and then you damage it. So that's very important for us when we hand over the equipment. Um, I also want to talk to you as well, uh, just to announce that um, we've just had, we're just concluding our monthly engagements with the sports associations, um, but we're going to be having a sports conference on the 7th of October. Uh, this is the first sports conference in the country, so it's an inaugural sports conference, and it's going to be our annual sports conference. Now, the, the objective of the sports conference is for two, two purposes. One is to flesh out and finalize the details and the consultation on uh, our sports academy. Our sports academy is going to be launched four weeks after that, just around four weeks after that. This will be the first sports academy ever in the country. The sports academy, incidentally, is part of our, our manifesto, the People's Progressive Party manifesto. So you can go and check in the manifesto and see that the sports academy is there. And so this is the launch of that. Um, we have a full information session uh, that we're going to be doing at the sports conference. The second purpose of the sports conference is so that the sports associations can talk to each other. So it's going to be panel discussion driven. You can have your moderators. It's going to be a very professional engagement. A lot of the sports, some sports associations are better in their administration than others. And some have been able to employ different techniques that are, um, have been beneficial, that have produced very good outcomes. Um, they, it's very important for me, having had that monthly engagement with them until now we had the National Sports Commission uh, been appointed. It was very important for me that, to get that engagement, but then I realized that it was great for them to talk to me and for, for the ministry to talk to them, but they weren't talking to each other. And that sports conference allows the vehicle for them to be able to do that. Did you just say which grounds could you possibly get in these? Which colleagues could work? Which colleagues so I had announced the 25 grounds that we were doing. Um, they're all, all along the coast and region 10. Just finally, any quick update in terms of how the, the, the assessment works out with Pathway for the unlikely World Cup? I know the, the ICCP were here recently and it's coming back in November. Uh, from your end, how would those work like? We hope to get us up to scratch security case. Yeah, it was, it was, it was positive. Um, we've got some remedial work that they have described that would be important for us to secure the bid. Um, you know, we stand a strong, strong chance, but you know, there are other com com uh, countries that are competing. Uh, I don't like to, to you know, put any kind of um, bets on anything unless I'm sure. I'm not, I'm not that kind of gambler, but I know that you know the country is. The ICC was representative was very happy about the passion that they see um, about cricket in the country uh, at the community level. Everybody is interested. They they want to see how they can make it work, um, and I I believe that we've put in a strong case for uh, us securing the bid. Now it, it's going to probably come down to some finer details to see you know how great of a condition that our grounds are in versus our competitors. But let's see how that goes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do want to update you as well uh, on how we are converting the National Stadium into the multi-purpose sport facility because that is something that I had announced a couple months ago or a few months ago. You'd be happy to know that we've moved full speed ahead on that. So um, what you see right now, and I'm sure you'll be able to take some shots as you're going out, the football field is being built um, just as you enter on the northern side. Right now, they are clearing the field, so the football field is being built there. Uh, we're going to be building the volleyball field right just adjacent to the tarmac. Um, we're going to put a tennis court um, near to the tarmac as well, or on the tarmac as well, uh, as well as a basketball court. So we've had some engagements with the um, Guyana Amateur Basketball Association as well as the Federation. So we're purchasing the equipment um, at the moment. So that is what we're doing to convert it into a multi-purpose sports facility. 
but coming for next year, which is something that is very important to me and is something that must be done, is building the uh, cricket academy, the specialized kind of cricket academy, where um, which will be just north of here as well. Uh, this the, the function of this is to be able to play cricket anytime, whether you have good weather, bad wet weather. And we're, we're working on the designs right now. Um, we're pretty confident that we'll be able to finalize those details coming so coming out of the next budget. We'll, that'll be completed within a few months so that we can get that started. Good. Mm -hmm.